Hi guys, my name is Jeremy. Welcome to another edition of Sweep on YouTube. In today's tutorial, I just want to take a look at the copy error node again. Um, this is the third and probably final time I'll um, touch on this node. Um, I just want to show you guys how to do the ocean um, as it's in this movie here. I've got a little boat um, sitting on top of an ocean and I've got some particle spray and some ink cloth as well there. Um, but I'm not going to talk about those three elements because they're quite simple to set up. Just takes time consume, consuming to actually um, get it done. But the interesting thing I want to talk about is just the ocean and to incorporate the um, the copy node with that. So let's take a look at that. So I'm just going to start off with a plane. So I'll polyplane and I'm going to just increase the sub D's on there by 50, 50 by 50. Um, yep, circle I don't need. Okay, so I've got my plane. This is what's going to be my animated mesh. Um, I'm also going to just create my cube. And that's going to be my little instance object. So cube is way too big for what I want it for. So you kind of want to scale it down to approximately the size of the cube, the final cube that you want to um, have instance in this case. And also if we just go into um, right view for example and zoom in we also want to just move the pivot point down to the bottom. The reason why you want to do that is when you're scaling the cube, you want it to scale from the bottom up in positive Y rather than um, in both directions, negative Y and positive Y. And so once we've done that, just select it and screen, and then we just want to freeze transforms on that. And then we'll have it all set up in our node editor. Like so, and then we can just hide it. We don't need that in screen anymore. I'm going to pin all my nodes, and I'm also going to pin all nodes by default on creation. Okay, so from there, we can just set up the cube now, and to do that, we'll just create a, a copy of node. And we also need an out mesh for the copy node, so we can just create any type of mesh. I'm just going to create a poly cube. And I'm going to call the cube just output mesh. So, not quite sure what happened there. Output mesh. Okay. And I'm just going to connect the output mesh into the in mesh for that. And I'm also just going to make my nodes a little bit bigger so you can see them. Okay, and now if I just select the copy node, or oh sorry, the cube that I want to instance, and then just select the copy node and in the attribute editor, you'll see that the copy node is selected. I can just push add, and that'll add the transform automatically there for me. So I can just hide that, I don't need that anymore. Okay. And at the stage, um, the copy node isn't doing anything as such, it's just instance the cube, but it's not being told where to position the cube at all on the scene. So what we want to do is we want to position it to each of the verts on our plane mesh. And to do that, we're just going to use a point attribute to array node from soup. Okay. And if we just select point position on the attribute editor, and then we just hook up that to the copy node. So we want out position BP into our position array. And there you'll see that we get our little cubes instance there. And if we just go into the copy node and just select toggle on hard soft edges, we get a nice shading to look at. And you can see that a cube is just a little bit too small for what we need. But we can tidy that up when we start to play around with the scale. So if I just make my node into a little bit smaller, 
And also, I'm just going to go to my renderer and turn on my viewport. And I'm just going to have some ambient inclusion as well on there. It helps with the effect when it's animating. So, we have our basic setup. We've got our cubes instance to our points. And now we need to scale those things. So, I want, now want to uh, create an ocean texture, so let's go ahead and do that. Ocean texture. And let's just make that bigger as well. And I'm just going to set some default values here. I'm going to put three on scale. I'm going to put some animation on time, so just hit equals time divided by two, and then return, so that puts an expression in there for me. Um, my observer speed, I'm just going to bump that up to about 1.5. Known frequencies, they can go up a little bit. And wave height, they can go all the way up. And wave peaking, I'll bring that up as well. So now we've kind of got a, a patch of ocean there. Okay, actually I might just bring the scale to 5. So we've got a looking a bit further back. On the ocean texture. Okay, so now we want the values extracted from our ocean texture. And to do that, we just use our texture to array node down here, texture to array, and we'll hook up our out alpha, out alpha to our in alpha. And then if we go into our texture to array node, we'll just select alpha for our output data type. And if we go into a texture array node, we hit inputs, we see that it's looking for an input geometry as well. So we'll feed that in the plane so it knows how many points to sample. So world mesh and geometry. So that gives you our array our count, an array count. So from here, we, uh, we could try and um, <coughs> export the array, out array into our copier scale, but the scale is looking for a, um, a vector array, so we need to convert our float array to a vector array, and to do that we just go into soup again, and we're just looking for a, a remap, remap array. And if we go into, oh, sorry not remap array, right? we're going to use one of those later, but we need an array to array, sorry, so array to array, And you'll see over here the output data type. We've got vectors, and on our input array, we're just going to highlight or we're just going to click on X, Y, Z. Actually, it's already like that when you create a new node, so you don't need to touch anything here. And that's just going to populate all three values with our um, out alpha values in there. So it gives us uh, equal scaling in all directions. So out RGBPP to our inner array. Of course, it's just one array float value there, not all three, four. Okay, so from there, we can um, we can try going to the copier. So let's try that. So we've got access to our scale array now. If we hit that, you'll notice that we've got uh, a, a variation of sizes there, and it kind of looks like an ocean, and if I push play, you can kind of see some things being animated. So there are some results there, but it's not quite what we're after. And obviously, our scale was far too small for us. And also, we're getting some black meshes there, black um, cubes. And what's happening there is that we're getting some negative values in scale, and that's just turning the um, the mesh inside out, so we're getting the black. So um, what we need to do is we need to, um, we can use a remap array. Actually what we'll do is we'll um, use an array expression first. Uh, we'll use a remap array. We'll use a remap array because that makes kind of sense to what I'm trying to explain here. So out array, in array, and a remap array basically we want to clamp it so we don't want it to go below zero. And 
clamping our max, well, I'm going to bring that right up to 15 because with my expression, array expression, I'm going to, I'm going to use a multiplier of 10, between 10 and 15, so I want to clamp that at right about 15 and we want to affect the output because we're talking x, y, z here. And so if I plug that into the copier node, the scale, you'll see that we've kind of gotten worse, but at least now we've got no negative black values here. If I hit four, you can see we've got some kind of something going on there, but yet it's still it's still too small. But everything that was black before has now disappeared, so it's been remapped. So now what we're going to do is we're going to scale everything up a little bit. And to do that, we're going to use an array expression node. So we're going to map that, plug the outer array into the inner array. Okay, just move everything here along a little bit. And then our array expression node, we've got access to all these um, local variables inside the, um, the node. And the inner array one uses $x, $ex, $ey, and $ez. So we're going to use those, $ex equals 1. So we're going to hard code 1 in there. Actually, knowing that it was a little bit small before, I'm just going to go 1.1. And then $ey equals $ey times, this is our multiplier now, so I'm going to go times 12. This is our multiplier in y. And $ez equals 1.1. .1. So I'm going to hard code that in. Push apply. Now I'm going to hook it up to the copy node. So out array into our scale. And you'll see now that we're getting, if I hit the 5 key, Our cubes and the X and Y are looking pretty close now, looking a lot better. Getting some nice ambient inclusion there from the viewport. But you see we've got all these pools of black black mesh. And that's just because the mesh has been from the remap array has been clamped at zero. Normally they'll be negative values, but we've clamped it at zero. So to get rid of that. What we do is we just go back to our ocean texture. We go down to our color balance and we're going to just offset the alpha until we get rid of all of that black. Okay, and we can even play around with the alpha gain a little bit just to give it the waves a little bit more dramatic height. And over here, we can see a little bit of black over here, so we're just going to offset that a little bit again. Okay, and if I just drop down the scale a little bit, I'm going to drop it down to 3.5. So now we've got bigger waves, or a smaller sample of the ocean. And if we just play, hit play, we'll see we've got some black there. So we'll stop, go back down, we'll lift that off again, lift it up. So alpha offset's now close to 1, push play. And here we have it. So we've got plenty of texture in there, we've got plenty of height, we've got some lows, some nice lows. And we've got our instant object. Working. Okay, so we've gotten that far. So basically, the best way to, to to set out the scene is the way that I've done it, and that's to hook up, and that's to hook up the position first, using this bottom row of nodes here first, and then once you've done that, create the ocean texture, get the alpha out, create a vector array from it, remap it so it brings it up to between zero and whatever multiply you have. Put the expression in there, so we'll hard code in the X and the Z, and then uh, multiply in the Y and height, and then chuck in that in the copy node. And then after that, we go back to our ocean texture, and then we play around with the alpha offset and the alpha gain just to get that looking right. So from there, we want to colorize it. So we're going to colorize it using that 
array attribute to transfer, attribute transfer node. Okay, and what we can do here is we can just go directly from the copier into the attribute editor, so output mesh to in geometry, and then our attribute transfer our geometry to a mesh. Okay, so 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 far nothing has happened. It's just gonna it's just transferring straight through the attribute transfer as if the attribute transfer node didn't exist, and we're still going to get our output and our animation. Okay, and because I'm working with color vertex color. I'm going to just go back to my output mesh, go into mesh component display and just turn on colors. Okay, so I'm going to go back into my attribute transfer node now and select color and go into my bounding object. I'm going to create one of those. So, bounding object, I've got our colors there. I'm going to take this back. We're going to Increase the size of my bounding object. I'll just get bigger here. I'm going to turn my bounding object to a cube. Okay. Go back. Mesh is hidden in. My copy a node. And here it vertex color. So, no. No, that's not right. So, vertex color is turned off here. So, that's all good. Go back into here. Sometimes it just needs flicking on and off just to activate the, the color a little bit. So if it's not working, just go back into the output mesh and flick on the display colors again. I don't know whether it's the viewport thingy or what's going on there. You'll see that everything's white now. and We can scale that down a little bit if we want to and you'll see that the rest of it's disappearing. That's because they're alpha. We're also affecting the alpha. So if we go back into the transfer and just hit solid alpha, can see that it's now turned black. So what we'll do is we'll play with the colors now because then you can see how the bounding, bounding object works. So if I come into here I'm going to leave, I want the white up the top and I want to create a blue, nice kind of greeny blue. Like so, I want to Create another color here, just something darker. And then down here, we're going to create something nice and dark, like that. Okay, so we'll hide that. Now, we kind of not see much of what's going on here, but if we if I scale this up, you can kind of see what's going on now. Put it down. No, it's not going to let me do it. Okay, so we go up. So basically what's happening is kind of like a circular ramp or a spherical ramp in the middle. So we've got a, a circle of white and then it goes a circle of light blue and then a circle of dark blue. Well it's actually a, sorry, it's a, yeah, it's a circle rather than a sphere. And then it goes down, so it starts in the middle, starts in white and on positive Y and negative Y it's this ramp colour here. So what we've got to do is we make it scale it up on X and uh, Z, so we get total coverage, and then the Y we're just going to scale that down again. So, going to bring our Y down, so it's more like that. Keep going, okay, and then we're just going to bring it up until our white peaks variation show like that. Okay, so you can play around with the scale and with the colour and I'm actually quite happy with that as it is so I'm just going to push, maybe we'll just hit the uh, play blast. So the, the setup is quite easy if you kind of follow the procedure that I've done. If you kind of work, work it any other way, it starts getting a little bit complicated. So if you do it in those steps, you can kind of troubleshoot your ocean texture and get it the way that you want it to look. Um, and after that, once you've got that sorted, 
it's mainly working with the, the ocean texture alpha offset to kind of lift it up off the um, off the ground and bring it up a little bit and then after that once you've got that sorted then you can work in the color using the attribute transfer node um, of course you can just change the ocean texture frequencies um, observer speed to get the kind of look that you're after and also um, if you like you can uh, use the peak node to, to deform a mesh to match to match the, um, the copier node um, output and then you can use that mesh to as collision objects for particles um, or emission things like that which I'm not going to go into in this tutorial um, just because of time's sake so that's done go into F check so it's pretty fast if I just slide it down a little bit so these are rough ocean might be a little bit too fast but it's pretty rough pretty rough out there so there you have it um, hope you enjoyed that and if you have any questions just jump on the forum and ask away we're happy to help Oh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Cheers.